So you can see she's being receptive to attention. And this is something I would love opinions on as well. I don't know if I'll catch it on film, but quite frequently this goes on and then he mounts from the front and she doesn't, she doesn't move. You know, I don't, is this still considered standing heat at that point when he's mounting from the wrong end? The other thing that I kind of look for, and this could be something I'm totally making up in my own mind as well, but there definitely is a level of sleepiness to her, especially right now, you know? Yeah, it's, it's already kind of getting warm and humid, but it's not that bad. So she was, you know, trying to mount that other heifer there. Yeah, everyone's loving on her. Um, you know, she's just acting very calm she's almost sleepy right both both her and and that steer just they kind of look like they have heavy eyes they weren't excited um which you know can tell me that maybe she was up all night you know trying to mount everyone all night or uh you know just running around being uncomfortable and she didn't sleep a whole lot you need to do your job quit coming after me go after her so yeah, as you can see, a lot of affection from her towards everyone. So this is where I need to decide because had I seen this behavior yesterday evening and then I saw her, her stand a few times this morning, I would say, you know, okay, she's definitely in standing heat. But I didn't see any of this behavior right before bed. Obviously it could have gone on overnight, but it's usually this lovey-dovey, rubby behavior that leads into then standing heat so it's kind of like the start of her the start of her cycle that 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 kind of behavior happens during the start of the cycle from what i've noticed so i don't know it's tough so she didn't move away but he was also in front of her so i don't know man i wish i wish i was doing like a live video right now with you guys that have any, you know, that, that know what's going on, that could be telling me what, what I'm seeing here. Yeah, my issue is there's that, that AM PM rule that if you see her standing in the morning, you breed her that evening and vice versa. If you see her standing in the evening, you breed her the following morning, a 12 hour difference. Well, by standing this morning, if she was in true standing heat at seven o'clock this morning, that would be close to seven o'clock this evening that she would have to be bred. Well, the vet closes at five and uh, they're not big on coming in after hours to do that. So this is where being able to AI myself would really come in handy. I don't know, that looked like standing heat to me. So let's talk about this real quick. Um, got a hold of the vet and told him the situation. You know, right before dark last night, zero activity. Um, you know, absolutely nothing. And then at first light this morning when I went down, uh, you know, I saw some saw some riding going on, I saw some standing going on, and then basically all the all the other signs I showed you guys. So I just told him I don't I didn't quite know when her heat cycle started and how long she'd been standing. If the standing that I witnessed was, you know, was it actually standing? Was she just, just now starting to do it or was she on the tail end of it all? So like I said, I had scheduled an appointment at 11 o'clock a week ago. That was the only time slot he had. And he said it'd be fine to get her in at 11 um, and do a breeding attempt on her. So, you know, whether or not that's because he knows he won't have anything later on this, this evening, if she ends up coming in like true, truly coming into heat and truly standing uh, this evening or tomorrow morning. I don't know, but it's worth a try, I guess. All right, let's kind of work backwards through my system here. Obviously, I've got the old Dodge and the old trailer. And then we come into this, this mud lot, this permanent, permanent mud lot here. And these are just cheap you know, Balin Country, Tractor Supply, Cattle Panels. 
that I purchased. So we get them in this little alley, just a compost pile. And they're coming up this trail. So this trail runs all the way down to the back pasture. So then I've set up um, an alleyway with temporary electric wire down through the middle of the back pasture to get them up into this trail. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I still got some time before I gotta leave, but I've got a gate, you know, you've seen that gate before at the very end of this trail. So I wanna at least get them in this section, close off that gate and then stage them in here until we get close to getting ready to load them. So we'll see how this goes. I have my, my protein bucket insurance policy with me. Um, I'm hoping that because like I said, they definitely seem kind of kind of out of it, kind of tired, kind of relaxed, probably from being up all night, um, you know, chasing each other around. I'm hoping that they're a little bit more relaxed. They obviously have full bellies this time because I moved them this morning. So I hope that it's just a nice calm walk from the least pasture through this, through this alleyway I set up and uh, up into the trailer. So this is just a, a long alley I set up and we are moving into the sun, which sucks. It's gonna be, it's gonna make it even worse. They're gonna have a hard time seeing the post. They're gonna have a hard time seeing the wire. They're not gonna wanna move as, they're not gonna be as relaxed when they're facing the sun, but we don't really have a choice, so. Hey, girls. Hey, girls. Come on, girls, nice easy walk. Come on, girls. Hey, mama. Ah, uh, just wait, bud. I, I, just... Hopefully they don't stop to eat this stuff. It's really good. Come on, girls. Hey, girls. All right, that actually didn't go too bad. It is getting hot though. Today's, today's supposed to be pretty hot and humid. Um, yeah, they didn't go bad at all. Like I said, it obviously helped that they, they got moved this morning so they had full bellies. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they were up at, all night um, chasing each other around because they were, you know, one of them was going into heat so I know they're a little tired. So they were pretty relaxed. So I have them in that trail. I don't, I don't wanna get them up into that mud lot in the corral system just yet and let them hang out because I feel like it always goes a lot smoother when I kind of push them up the trail, get them right into that alley and then right into the trailer kind of first thing instead of letting them in. They're already comfortable with it, right? They already know the mud lot. They know those corral panels. Um, if this was the first couple times that I was loading them, and actually, I, I did do this, and I've done this with my, my head gate, um, with my chute that I bought, is I, I lock them in that mud lot with those panels, with that head gate kind of set up in that way so they can explore stuff on their own time. They can, they can be relaxed and, and figure stuff out on their own time without me, you know, uh, trying to chase them. So that's a big key to the success of giving 
anything new to cattle is let them figure it out on their own time. So they're already comfortable in there. They already know the drill. I mean, we, we go to the vet how many times a year, uh, you know, particularly because of AI. So, but I don't want to get them in there and let them hang out. I got about 25 minutes before I need to hit the road. Um, I don't want to get in there and let them hang out just because they'll start to figure it out. Cause they don't like going obviously, right? It's like your dog going to the vet. They don't like getting loaded up and going to the vet. So if they're in there and they're, they're hanging out, they'll, they'll realize that the trailer's there and they'll kind of figure out what's going on. Plus I plan to touch on this later. My setup is horrible. It is not a good setup. And it's a great lesson to be learned about taking the cheap way out and spending, spending as little money as possible when I start at, started out while can be good in some things in this case it was not good at all because now i've just wasted money i have a bunch of mismatched stuff and i have a bunch of weak stuff so i don't want to have them have access to those corral panels right now for 25 minutes and get all antsy because more than likely they're gonna they're gonna break something um so i also want to touch on how many i'm taking to the vet this has been something i've struggled with and i've tried to do a bunch of research and i actually asked uh, a lot of you guys um, and a few a few you you viewers commented and I thank you for those comments about is it better to take the target animal the one animal that has to go in for a reason or take them all especially when it comes to breeding because we want to keep that stress level down right making things as stressless as possible just leads to that greater success in uh, conception rate so um, Brock, I think his name was, um, he, he confirmed along with a handful of other people kind of confirmed my thoughts that we should at least bring, bring a buddy, right? At least bring one other one just to help keep her calm. So my plan is to leave the two heifers in the calf here and take the target, the target cow who needs the open cow who needs bread and, um, that steer. I want to try and get them both, both to go. You know, it's one of those things that if I actually get them all loaded smoothly and they're all in the trailer, I've made that mistake before to where I either wanted to reorganize who was where in which section of the trailer because it's divided into two parts, or I didn't want to take them all. So I let them all out to try and shuffle some stuff around and sort some off, and then I couldn't get anyone in there. So it's one of those things that once they're in the trailer, I really just need to close the doors and go because, you know, I'm probably not going to get them back in. So. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then obviously the only other reason why I would want to take them all is it's still too early to preg check. So there's really no point in taking, taking the other two heifers to have them preg checked. And actually that brings up a good point that I just remembered. They really do say after, after AI or after your cows are exposed to uh, a bull, you really like, like a minimum of 45 days, minimum of 45 days, um, that you should not be hauling those animals because it's still, and this is keeping their entire stress level down, but you definitely not be hauling those animals because uh, they're still in that, that time frame that they can very easily abort any sort of pregnancy that they might've developed already. So we're at 42 days. We're at 42 days since all three of those girls got bred. So I'm, I'm below that minimum 45. And they actually say, if you can wait 90 days before you haul cattle after after attempted conception, um, that's best. I don't want to take those other two if I don't have to. I'm on the fence if that dun, that brown uh, colored Dexter heifer is actually pregnant. She's been the only other one that's kind of showing interest in, in the cow this morning. And she was a very difficult, she was a very difficult case to try and breed according to my vet this year. But there might actually be some reproductive tract issues going on with her. So it wouldn't surprise me if she comes up open this fall. I don't have enough evidence right now to bring her along to risk, especially if she is fragile in the reproductive area, to risk stressing her out, hauling her today. Plus with it being hot and humid, the less amount of animals I can have packed into that trailer, the better that's gonna be. And for the animals and for my truck too, because yeah, if you've watched my other video, my last trip to the vet, I think the first time I took them in for breeding this year, my truck blew up on me. And that was, the weather was a lot cooler that day. so. The less weight that I'm hauling with that old 1500, I think the better off uh, we're all gonna be. And of course, we're loading into the sun, go figure.
get on the road. Good kiddos. Oh boy, it's humid. I really hope my truck makes it. Um, I suppose I should, I should mention too, uh, Another big reason why I wanted that steer to come with is because he hasn't been into the vet since the spring and I didn't really get a good weight on him when, when we brought him in that first time. So obviously we're getting ready to go into winter and I need to calculate my hay uh, needs. And so that, that hay percentage fed per day is going to be based on their body weight. So I want to get him in and get a, get a current, a good current weight on him so I can figure out if I need to be buying more hay or not. I sure would love to be able to have a conversation with you guys, talk about some things on my mind, but you know, old truck, heavy trailer, windows have to be down because I can't run the air conditioner at the same time that I haul away. Had to make a quick pit stop for oil. I'm about a quart low. I sure do love these old Dodge Rams. No, really though, I, I do love these old Dodge Rams. I don't know why, they suck. Thanks a lot, Chuck Norris. Shea, yep, Daggett Shea. I think we'll just let them graze here for a little bit on the trail and kind of calm down. They're obviously hungry. Might be a good time too to talk about one of the strategies that the vet suggested. Just because we don't know exactly the timeline of when she came into heat. Um, you know, if that started right at sundown last night or if it just started this morning. One of the things he suggested is if she still is acting like she's in heat tomorrow morning. He suggested, you know, check her between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. 
And if she's still acting like she's in heat, letting letting everyone ride her, being really you know really licky and shovey and and rubby and all that stuff, kind of showing all the signs. You know, he said it wouldn't hurt to breed her again. So essentially, take her back tomorrow morning and put another straw in her. You know, he said healthy healthy semen will stay viable in the reproductive tract for about 24 hours. So so by noon tomorrow, essentially, if she's still in heat, she she could still successfully get bred with with what we gave her today. But just to boost your chances, you know, burn another straw essentially tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna let them graze. Like I said, I'm gonna let them kind of do their own thing. They're gonna stay in this strip, which is totally fine if they eat it down, because this is this is the strip that I travel back and forth with the ranger and the tractor. Um, so they're not gonna do any damage to it. They'll probably get back on the trail, eat that super good stuff, which man, they deserved it, you know? Uh, I'll give them a little break. So um, yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, uh, you know, let me know. I'll try and answer them. I, I feel like as the as I progress and as the channel progresses and this whole YouTube thing progresses, if it does, I'll be a lot more comfortable just video recording everything. But I'm still at that point now where I feel ridiculous being out in public videotaping myself. And, and I obviously asked the vet today if it was cool if I took some video, but I didn't tell him why. <laughs> so, um, you know, I hope that in the future, if this whole thing keeps up, that I'll be able to do like a start to finish uh, uh, video for, you know, everything AI when it comes to Dexter cows, but we'll get there. So thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.